Like David versus Goliath, the littlest thing can achieve the greatest. Although you've probably never seen a tardigrade, you've likely been around them, and they can beat humans hands down in the game of survival. They're one of the smallest and most resilient animals known to man can exist for years without food or water, and are practically indestructible. Watch and find out why tardigrades are really out of this world. Subscribe to Fact Feast, so you can feast your eyes on more content from the darker side. Tardigrades are cute little creatures, also known colloquially as water bears or moss piglets because the vast majority of them spend their lives inhabiting wet moss. You guessed it, the green squishy stuff in your backyard is likely teeming with tardigrades. In fact, you can find thousands of them crawling through your garden topsoil, so you can guess they're pretty tiny. In truth, most are about 0.5 millimeters. That's 0.02 inches long. Imagine a pencil. Most tardigrades can fit right on the very tip of the pencil, and to properly see them, you need to use a microscope. Tardigrade means slowly stepping, which for an eight-legged creature seems like a good description, but moss piglet certainly seems an appropriate nickname for these short and plump critters with their little claws. But why call them water bears? Well, some say they walk with a gait on stubby legs similar to a bear. They can swim as well, being found in both fresh and marine water sediments, anywhere in fact that is wet and has a food source. Tardigrades, depending on the species, eat decaying plant material, algae, fungi, nematodes, protozoans, and even each other sometimes. They also get eaten alive themselves by snails, mites, insect larvae, crustaceans, and other small arthropods. Tardigrades have been crawling around our planet for 500 million years, are thought to be the most closely related to arthropods, but don't look or act like any other animals you know. Although there are male and females, they can reproduce by parthenogenesis, which means their embryos don't need to be fertilized in order to grow. They can do it all themselves, but males can also fertilize eggs once they have been laid by the female, sometimes in her molted skin. You've probably heard that tardigrades are extreme survival experts, which means you can find them all over the world. On the downside, tardigrades usually only live for no more than a few months to a few years in optimum conditions, which generally means access to food and hydration. Yet they have an extraordinary superpower. Their bodies can enter a cryptobiotic phase using a special protein in which they are more or less dead, but can come back to life when environmental conditions are more favorable using special antioxidants to protect DNA. In this ball-like tongue state with retracted legs and head, they reduce their metabolic activity to undetectable levels, stopping all but life's most essential biological processes. They can maintain this condition of suspended animation and resist physical and chemical extremes for multiple years, if not decades. In this form, they can survive desiccation and freezing environments such as Antarctica, near absolute zero in fact, or temperatures in excess of boiling point. But that's not all. They can be found living at great heights, like the Himalayas, and great depths at the bottom of the ocean, can also endure extreme radiation, and even, believe it or not, space. In fact, it became the first animal to survive the oxygen-deprived sub-zero temperatures of space way back in 2007, when the European Space Agency discovered their ability to survive extreme dehydration, severe pressure change, and cosmic radiation, and yet still reproduce when the Photon M3 mission blasted into the cosmos. What's more astonishing is that they're now likely scattered over the moon. On the 11th of April 2019, the Israeli lunar lander Bereshit crashed onto the surface of the moon, a landing on the Sea of Serenity that was anything but tranquil. But it was more than just the spacecraft that collided. Thousands of dehydrated tardigrades were also probably ejected onto the surface in a protected environmental payload that may well have survived the impact. 
Some question whether the fact that they can only stay alive in these extreme environments in their dormant ton state truly makes them extremophiles, because they're not technically living. Well, if scientists discover a way to rehydrate them on the lunar surface, astronauts could return to the moon to settle the argument. But whatever you think about this, you have to agree that they're pretty unique creatures that could help scientists better understand how humans can survive space exploration. Because if Earth has to face another cataclysmic event of the scale that wiped out the dinosaurs, it will be us searching for new planets to colonize. Tardigrades will ride out the end of the world.